Hello friends, welcome to Snap Pick. Gunny T bringing it to you today because Glazer is unfortunately in the hospital with appendicitis. He gave me an emergency phone call, said, hey Gunny T, can you take the video for today? I said, yes, no problem, man. So I want everyone out there, please send your positive energies over to Glazer so he can get well soon, get back to bringing you decks every single day. I'm not sure how long he's gonna be out for, but uh, we will make sure that videos come to you no matter what. So what are we gonna be talking about today is the new card, US Agent. So we're gonna bring you some decks uh, to try on day one. But to start us off, we're actually gonna start with Glazer's Infinite Deck. So we wanted to bring you a deck today that didn't involve any of the new cards. And this is the one that Glazer climbed to Infinite to uh, in this season, only over a couple of days. So this is a Surfer deck, pretty standard Surfer package. The one piece that's a little bit different here is it also has a Wong package built into it. So really interesting there. You can use Wong uh, to double up your hazmat uh, triggers there, and also your loot cage to take those off of your own targets. So we'll go into our replacements. Uh, it, the deck does need Sebastian Shaw. Uh, it's gonna be one of your big power cards to hopefully win one of your lanes. And then uh, it can spread power out pretty good in the other lanes. So your big power lane, and then try to hopefully win one of the other two. You can try out any good three energy card for Hope Summers here if you don't have Hope Summers. Um, there's a lot of really good three energy cards out there. Kind of pick and choose whatever you'd like for that. Next, onto our turn by turn snapping. So in turn one, we don't have any one drops. So we're going to pass. Turn two, we're going to play Forge. It's definitely a great card to play on turn two, especially into some of our other cards. Uh, into our turn three, hopefully, if we've played that Forge on turn two, we can play a Brood. It's the best thing to put it on. If not, I would say Hope Summers is probably a, a really great contender there or Sebastian Shaw, especially if you've already played that Forge, because then it'll give them that extra buff. Turn four, we're gonna either play Wong or Absorbing Man, and this will kind of depend on um, how we are planning out the rest of our turns. So if you play Wong, then you have some options a little later, and if you play Absorbing Man, you're gonna kind of be playing it off of maybe that Brood that you did there, uh, or any of your cards that you wanna uh, do a double trigger on. So if we played Wong, now we can start playing Absorbing, or sorry, hold on, back up for a second. If you played Wong on top of Hope Summers, now you have uh, extra energy going into turn five, and you can play Hazmat and Absorbing Man on that Wong lane. And boy, oh boy, that is a ton of negative power going on to your opponent. So four, uh, four triggers there going off, which would lead you into a turn six of playing Luke Cage to, to take all that stuff back off, um, or moving into a Surfer, Odin, whatever you've kind of set up here. So I say that uh, if you didn't play your Hazmat and your Absorbing Man on turn five, you could play a Sarah there to reduce the cost of your cards. Uh, the, all of those three costs turn into two costs. You could drop three of them on uh, turn six there, which is a really excellent thing that you could be doing. But it, again, it plays out like a normal Surfer deck, um, doing all those things, multiplying them. But you, there's several ways that the outcomes of this deck is going to actually come out, depending on what you have played. So if you had that Wong out early, especially if you have Sebastian Shaw, Ironheart is just but such a great card. It's going <laughs> to make um, Sebastian Shaw just climb up and a whole lot of power, hopefully winning you one lane. Silver Surfer is awesome, especially if you have your Brood, you've been Forged. You're going to have a ton of stats there as well. Uh, just tons of things to be doing. And then you also have that Odin that you could drop on turn six, uh, especially if you've got Luke Cage out early and you're doing the uh, Hazmat and the Absorbing Man stuff. You're just going to completely demolish your opponent's side of the board and take away any power that they've had there at all. Next, we're going to move into our new card. So what does 6,000 tokens or your spotlight keys get you? It's going to get you U.S. Agent, who is a 4-5, or sorry, he's a 2-3. Um, the ongoing 4, 5, and 6 cost cards here have negative 3 power. Uh, in our spotlights for the week, we have a really great spotlight variant for the U.S. Agent. Uh, a pretty nice one there for Mirage. And I tell you what, this Jeff right here make, might make me spend my spotlight keys out by itself. This is a fantastic Jeff variant. I love it. Uh, I'm not certain if I'll be going for it, but I would not be sad if I owned this Jeff variant by any means. For our synergies here, most have agreed that this is a not a really great card. Uh, only time will tell for it. Uh, he's potentially a 2-6 pretty easily, uh, up to a 2-15 by the end of the game. Uh, but really it seems like 2-9 is where it's going to lie most of the time. Um, it needs to be played late because that will allow you to know where your opponent's bigger cards are going to be at. Uh, and I will say that it is hard countered by your opponent's Luke Cage. Um, 
obviously if you put Luke Cage in your own deck, you could take away some of that negative from your side, but uh, if your opponent plays one, then then you just played a 2-3. It's not Man-Thing. It has two less costs, one less power, uh, but it gives one more uh, minus one. A notable thing here is most decks have more uh, one, two, and three cost cards than they do four, five, and six cards, so it's probably going to be hitting more things, and it obviously doesn't um, it, do it doesn't synergize as well with like debris and some of those other clog things that you will be doing. Um, it could potentially work with Sarah, Cerebro, or Bounce. A lot of those play low cost cards that won't be affected by US Agent. So some good synergies there. Um, and it may be meant to go with Baron Zemo, pulling out something very low cost from your opponent. Baron Zemo is a three cost himself, so it won't be affected by US Agent. So definitely a good way to help boost up that lane for yourself. Um, and then also might be good with Doc Doc as well. If you pull Doc Doc out, that's ob or uh, if your opponent. Sorry, if you play Doc Doc and it pulls out some big things from your opponent, drop on your um, US agent there and give a bunch of things to the, the minus three power. All right, we're going to bring you some decks from the community. The first one here is Drew Barry's US Monkey. So this is a, um, a normal hit monkey deck looking to play lots of cards out on a, the final turn and then hopefully, um, you know, just boosting up hit monkey as much as possible. The notable thing here is there's only two cards in the deck that would be affected by U.S. Agent, and that's Shang-Chi and Sarah. So you just play around those two cards and hopefully boosting up one of your lanes with your U.S. Agent and then taking down one of your opponent's lanes with the Shang-Chi. You're just winning it, especially Angela's gotten the, the boost now, so you could add a whole lot of power on Angela. Uh, Bishop's also another great card to add a whole lot of power, so hopefully you'll spread out your power enough where you can take it over from your opponent. Next one's coming to us from It's Guest Gaming, Surfing in the Trenches. Uh, this is a hazmat deck, kind of uh, on the same line before, as we talked about uh, with Blazer's deck there, using uh, Wong and hazmat, using Luke Cage. Uh, it can also extend the game out a little bit. Um, it's got some great things built in here with Rogue, taking away things if your opponent did play that Luke Cage, especially week one. Really great uh, if you're expecting them to play Luke Cage to stop your US agent, um, then you can rogue away that uh that luke cage ability and the, again it looks very similar to what glazer did so i'm not going to talk too much about it but it is a surfer deck doing surfer things um with your three cost next one is uh doc d's board fill tempo this is a really cool interaction that you're going to see a couple times here through these decks but goose is such an amazing card with us agent it doesn't allow your opponent to play three or sorry four five or six cost cards there so that's one lane that your opponent just can't even play those cards in two, so more likely that you're going to hit their big cards with your U.S. agent. Um, Valkyrie does a really good job here of, uh, you know, closing out the game with broods or something like that, um, especially if you're playing on top of a loot cage, because um, then your cards can't be reduced while your opponents are being reduced. Um, and then you've got Mockingbird with brood as well with Mysterio. It's just a really good package looking to fill up the board. Miss Marvel, or sorry, Blue Marvel, Valkyrie, all that stuff. And then that U.S. agent hopefully taking out one of those two lanes because of the, the goose locking it down. Next one, Royce's Like Rolls uh, Bro 3. So this is a Cerebro 3 deck looking to take advantage of Cerebro. Kind of the same thing we had talked about before. There's only three cards in this deck that can be affected by U.S. agent, Iron Man, Shang-Chi, and Valkyrie. Um, but you just play around those yourself uh, while utilizing your U.S. agent to hopefully take down your opponent's bigger cards. One of the things Cerebro 3 does kind of lack at times is its ability to take over from your opponent's very large card. So being able to do that yourself is actually really, really key here for these type of decks. And then another way to get over on top of some of those big cards is the Valkyrie there. So hopefully closing down two lanes from your opponent's big cards with either Valkyrie uh, or US Agent getting a nice buff there. Next one, US Agent Zoo. I really like this deck. So Zoo in particular takes advantage of U.S. Agent really well. It's a 2-3 already, so just getting boosted up there. Uh, the U.S. Agent is also only affecting Kazar or Blue Marvel. The rest of your cards are all unaffected, where your opponents obviously are. But it's got a new Dazzler in there that's getting beefed up just so much uh, with the added power. It's got your normal Ant-Man, Sentinel Jeff, Nightcrawler, Squirrel Girl. It's going to fill up all the lanes and hopefully just take you over the top of your opponent. All right. Then we got Ekans, uh, US Agent Junk Deck. This Junk Deck, I didn't even think about the synergy until I saw this deck, but a Hobgoblin played and a US Agent played on top of that is going to add negative 11 power to your opponent's side of the board. And that is 
kind of insane. If you're able to couple that up with a Sentry's Void being pushed over there as well, that is, that's a lane one all by itself. You don't even have to put anything there. If you have US Agent, Hobgoblin, and the Void on their side of the board, focus on the rest of the lanes, maybe drop an Elias down on turn six there to take over from one of those lanes uh, that your opponent may be trying to win late. But man, this deck in particular is just doing work. It's got Man Thing in here. It's all the negative energies going on, um, and it looks really, really strong. Next one we're going to talk about is a U.S. Hazard. Um, this one is also utilizing Goose here. It looks very similar. Glazer made this one, um, but going to lock down those lanes from your opponent, being able to play their bigger cost cards because of Goose, and then utilizing the Hazmat Wong package again um, with Absorbing Man. We already talked about that, uh, and then Man Thing. This one's bringing some spicy tech, though, with uh, Spectrum. So most of these cards have ongoing abilities. Spectrum's going to push those even further, uh, just adding so much power to your board while taking away the power from your opponent's board. I really like this one, too, because it's got the hazmat and the man thing in it, um, as well as the U.S. agent. So just so much negative energy going on the, your opponent's side of the board. Everyone's going to need to pack loot cage for this week because it. I'm telling you, U.S. agent's going to be everywhere. Man thing, hazmat, all these cards are just going to be destroyed in people's boards so make sure you are packing your loot cages next one is getting high in the usa so we got high evolutionary package looks really great especially when coupled with us agent probably played early here that way that your absorbing man could hopefully come down for free um this one is is doing a lot of normal high evolutionary things with the cyclops there it's just a lot of negative energy on your opponent's side of the board um and being able to play out a Zabu in this list, uh, so you can play Man Thing and The Thing out on turn three and four, respectively, seems seems really great. Uh, this is a deck to look out for as well. All right, then we got Eva's Baron Ball Agent. So this one's looking to do what we've seen going around a lot right now, which is completely destroying your deck with the Gladiator, with the Yondu, and the Cable. Uh, Baron Zemo, make your opponent not be able to do anything on the final turns, except for what they've already got in hand. Uh, you can cannonball away one of your opponent's bigger cards there, uh, hopefully destroying it. Um, I don't know how much we've really been doing that, but you can always try. Uh, and then you can utilize your hood, as well as your centuries void, um, to push that negative power over to your opponent's side of the board. All right, set campers, new bounce with agents. So this is the, the bounce deck that has been focusing laser focusing on destroying your opponent's deck with the, the spider ham iceman yondu uh and the cable package there uh throwing in baron zemo and gladiator hopefully just taking all of your opponent's cards away dock docking into a lane that either even if they win that lane hopefully they can't do anything else because all they have is cards left in their hand that you're then getting rid of uh you can always take that away later with the red hulk uh, possibly pushing over the top or throwing your u.s agent on top of there if they have a couple of their big cards in their hand Man, this deck has been a menace for me. I played this deck against uh, a Conquest deck today, or a Conquest game, and it just felt inevitable. Like, I, I just ran out of cards every single game. I only won one or two matches, um, or two one or two games in that match, and it just felt really bad. Uh, Shang-Chi and Doc Op work really well in this deck, especially if you don't draw your U.S. Agent. Uh, just make sure you're not playing U.S. Agent on top of the lane where you want to play Shang-Chi, because then their big cards will be taken under Shang-Chi's brain. All right, so does U.S. Agent look good? I think probably not. Um, it's going to be a hard condition to meet. It is a lot of power if you can get it to go off, but um, there are some decks that will be really strong against. For instance, the Helidex and the, the Sandman Ramp that's going around right now, that has a lot of really beefy cards, so your U.S. Agent can get really big. Uh, it has a high, a high potential there, but whenever it's bad, it's probably really bad. Um, it's all really going to depend on you know what your opponent ends up um, so as always, we'll check on Friday and then again on Monday to see if we should buy it. Next up is Jeff, the baby land shark. Um, he is also in the spotlight caches, and we have some deck for you here. Uh, first one is Silky Smooth is back. Oh, it was so funny. I was watching Lambu live on the uh, OTA, and then the OTA video talked about uh, Silky Smooth um, actually in their verbiage there. And Lambu was like, oh, no, they put me on the map. I'm like, You've always been on the map. Like, when were you ever not on the map? But Silky Smooth, here we go. Uh, great deck. It does really need Silk to go off. Um, but Jeff is really great in this package as well. Elsa Pride now being, or so, sorry, Elsa Bloodstone now being able to do stuff anywhere really makes the deck 
very, very viable. Um, throwing that extra bonus on top of Jeff and Silk, things moving around with Craven. You got Kitty Pride there with your Angela, uh, and then Hope Summers really takes this to a new level. All right, next one is uh, Lambie's Sandman Enjoyer. I've been playing this deck a lot today, uh, and it's it feels really powerful. Like there's some powerful things you could do here. So uh, one thing you can do is you can ramp up into a leader. If you end up ramping into your leader. You can obviously pull their biggest thing for that turn, especially if you use a wave. Hopefully, you're going to wave out a leader, and they'll wave out a big thing that you want to have. And then uh, you can you know, use your Sandman on that turn five, uh, playing into uh, Odin on turn six, so you can get your leader again. All right, Lockdown also uses Jeff, obviously in a really good way, because it's going to storm out a lane, closing it down for your opponent, uh, while well, you can still move your Jeff into really anywhere you want it to be. Uh, Vision also moves around well. Uh, a Storm on turn three with a Jessica Jones on turn four works really well into that, that lockdown lane, but Jeff is essential to the lockdown deck. Our next spotlight card and our third and final spotlight for this week will be Mirage. Um, copy the lowest cost card in your opponent's hand and then give it to power. <clears throat> so Finn's Loki snap deck has been posted on here, uh, or we have made videos for it before, but it's a really great deck. Uh, looking to steal your opponent's stuff. Mockingbird makes this deck really awesome as well. And an Elsa Bloodstone is back in Loki, baby. I would not be surprised to see uh, uh, Angela come back into the Loki deck as well. But Mirage is pretty good in this deck. Um, overall, it just it's, it's a great card to pull more things from your opponent. Make yourself have a bigger hand for Loki or play your opponent's cards uh, with a boosted power for your Mockingbird. Next one is a simple Dino deck. This one should be pretty easy to make. Uh, I will say that. Um, Mirage is, is replaceable pretty much in all these decks with like a Sentinel or something. Um, obviously not here because it's running Sentinel, but Mirage does make your Dino deck a lot bigger or a lot better. Pulling extra cards from your opponent, filling your hand, Moon Girling that uh, if you still have that card in your hand, then it's still going to retain that extra power uh, and then making Devil Dinosaur huge as well as reducing the cost of your Mockingbird with all of those uh, cards that you have copied. And then Combat Pro Proxima, good stuff. Uh, also uses the, um, sorry, backup. This is Proxima Good Stuff deck. Yep. All right. Where's Jeff here? I think we messed up. Don't worry. We're going to skip this one and go on to our next card. <clears throat> All right. Conclusions. Jeff goes really well in so many decks. Uh, you'll never be sad for owning Jeff. So by all means, please, please, please get Jeff if you can. Uh, Mirage is not really needed. I said that it comes and goes, but it can often be replaced by things like Sentinel, so uh, I wouldn't open specifically for Mirage, but you wouldn't be sad to own it in your collection for sure. And then my advice to you is to wait on US Agent, let players with the external resources, all the content creators out there, make the decks, wait till Friday before the weekend missions, or maybe even Monday before your last chance to get it. Let's find out if US Agent is good before we spend our precious, precious resources on it. Um, so like I said, don't open for just Jeff. Um, you can skip on Mirage. You can skip on US Agent for right now. Jeff is great to own. If you don't have all three of the cards, maybe you can consider opening. Um, but I certainly wouldn't open for US Agent or Mirage right now. I would pretty much be only opening for Jeff. Thank you all, patrons. These are the $10 patrons here. I'm not going to read them out. Glazer's really good at reading them out. But these folks right here really make the magic happen and allow us to do things like the Snap Judgments League, our King of the Hill events, and all the other great happenings. Uh, we have a huge tournament coming up that you'll find out more information about here in about a week. But it's going to be absolutely ginormous. I want to see over 300 players in this tournament. And that is all thanks to all the patrons, but especially our $10 patrons that you see right here. Glazer, I hope you get better, buddy. Uh, I'm really rooting for you here. I know appendicitis really sucks. You're going to be on painkillers for a while, so I don't know if I'm doing this video again tomorrow. But if I am, I am here for you. And everybody out there, please send your thoughts uh, and positive energies over to Glazer so he gets better soon and can continue bringing you great videos every single day of the week. All right. Until next time, Gunny T out.